I saw is that we've got to keep pace. You've got to, you got to, you, not just that we're on the right path, not just that we're running the, the right race, but we've got to keep pace. Look, if we're going to, if, if we're going to remember and live our lives in, in remembering those that have gone on before us, not just here and now, but throughout the entire Word of God, then, then not only do you've got to get, run the race that God has put you on, quit pursuing all these other things. You've got to develop pace. You've got to get in, you, you've got to, you know what I'm saying? When I go and run, I like to run. I like to run. It's probably not good for me. It's probably horrible for my back and for my knees, and I know and I understand, but I love to go and run. I love just to take off and run. Do you know that my pace determines how long I go? If I start out really fast, then I usually will only do like three miles because that's all I can do. But if I develop a good pace, like a 10-minute mile. I could go for as many as six miles. You understand? Your pace determines. Your pace determines how far you go, how much you can do. And, and, and I was thinking about pace. I said, God, what is it that you're wanting to reveal to us about pace? Because it says that we we not only have to run the race that's marked out for us, but we have to persevere and push in this race. It says that we've got to be determined, that we've got to set a pace. We can't give up. We need to be constant and consistent. That's what the writer was saying. Not only do you got to get on course, but you've got to develop a pace. You're, you need to become consistent in the way that you serve God. Why were these great men and women of faith? Because they were consistent. And, 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 and they're working for God. They understood who they were. They weren't worried about being someone else. They didn't want what someone else had. They wanted what God had for them. They were okay with that. They were okay with their calling and their anointing. They understood the path that God had put them on. And they became consistent in their pace so they could finish the race strong. And I begin to think of, I begin to think of unsung heroes. Probably because of Memorial Weekend, but, you know, we often, we often glorify uh, uh, the Elishas because Elisha stuck with Elijah for like eight years, hung right there with him, served him, you know what I'm saying, probably washed his feet and everything, the whole nine yards. We think of people like Joshua who for like 40 years lived in the shadow of Moses. You know, we think about these kind of great people. We do. We think about David, you know, King David who, who would never touch a hair on Saul's head. You know, for 10 years, a decade, he had to wait to become king. These people were consistent. But I thought, what about the unsung heroes? In the book of Acts, it talks about a lady named Dorcas. Remember Dorcas? Dorcas, Dorcas made clothes for people. Dorcas was sold out. She didn't have a title. She didn't have a great position. She didn't have a big, great name. Many of you don't even know who she is. Do you know what she did? What she did was people who had less than her, she would make clothes for them. She would sew. She, she, would, she was like Cokie, you know what I'm saying? She would, she would provide for the needs of others. That's, that's, that's like an unsung hero. I thought, about, I thought about the prophetess Anna. You don't even know who Anna is, probably. And I'd forgotten that Anna was a, my, my daughter, Anna. She has a biblical name. I was connecting that, you know. So that was pretty cool. Anna was a prophetess. The Bible says that she had been married, but her husband had died. And for 84 years, she served in the temple. Day in and day out, she prayed, offered, offered uh, uh, her worship. She fasted. She was diligent. She didn't have a big title. She wasn't some big, great person. She wasn't well-known. She was consistent, though. She was okay with who she was. She was okay with just going to the temple and serving God. Like Dorcas, she was just okay with praying. She was just okay with God. This is who I am. This is what you've called me to do. So I'll just get in pace. You see, you see it, it, it's not enough that we understand the course that God has put us on, but we've got to stay consistent. We've got to keep the stride, keep the pace. I thought about, I thought about Jonathan's armor bearer. 1 Samuel chapter 14. The Bible says that his armor bearer, we don't even know his name. That's how insignificant he was, but was he really insignificant? No, the Bible says that he was with Jonathan heart and soul. The Bible says that wherever Jonathan went, his armor bearer went with him. He always had his back. 
when Jonathan climbed the cliff to fight the Philistines, his armor bearer was behind him and climbed the cliff to fight the Philistines. When Jonathan pulled out his sword on that half acre of land and killed some 20 Philistines, the Bible says that his armor bearer was right there with him, killing Philistines with him. For as long as Jonathan was alive, this armor bearer was with him. He served him. He fed him. He took care of him. And it was okay that he wasn't the king's son. It was okay that he didn't have some big, great name that everybody would remember. He was satisfied with the course that God had put him on. He was satisfied in keeping the pace and doing what God had told him to do. I thought of Uriah. Remember Uriah? We just read about this, didn't we? Uriah. Again, 2 Samuel. I believe chapter 11. Uriah was a great, he was one of the mighty men of God. He was like Asahel. He was a mighty man, a great warrior. The Bible says that David had an affair with his wife while he was out fighting. Brought him back in to try to coax him in to sleeping with his wife so that he would think the child within her womb was his and not the king's. But you know what this committed and most dedicated individual did? He said, there's no way. He said, there's no way. He said, Joab's out fighting. The other guys are out fighting. I would never disgrace you as my king, and I would never disgrace those guys I fight with by going home and being with my wife and laying under my roof. He laid at the door to the palace with his little mat. The Bible says to David frantically, frantically trying to devise a way to get him there. The second night that Uriah was back from fighting, he, he got him drunk. Thinking if I just get him drunk, he'll, he'll, you know, he'll fold, he'll do it. But this guy was consistent. Boy, he was dedicated. He didn't have some big, great name. Not really. We don't really know a whole lot about Uriah. But the Bible says even in a drunken stupor that he knelt down and laid at the door to the king's palace because he refused to partake while everybody else was sacrificing. He said, I may not be with them, but I'll sacrifice with them. I may not be fighting with them, but I'll fight as much here as they are there. The Bible says David sent him back. You know the story, right? You know, I believe with all my heart, David said, he said to Joab, put him out front where the fighting is fierce. And then have all the other soldiers pull back so he'll die in battle. You know, as all the other ones were pulling back, I bet that Uriah didn't pull back. As everybody else was retreating, I bet that Uriah was fighting because he understood who he was. He loved his God. He served his king, and he would die for his country. He knew the course that God had set him on. He was okay with doing what God had called him to do. And he did it to the very best of his ability, even when it meant it would cost him his life. God says, remembering is not enough. Thinking about the great things that everybody else has done is not good enough. What great things are you supposed to do? What great things has God called you to do? What great man or woman of faith is God raising you up to be? There's only one way to find out. Run the appointed course, the race that's been marked out before you. Understand who God's called you to be and be okay with that. Get your pace. Get committed. Get dedicated. Don't look back. Put your hand to the plow and go forward.